welcome to The Journeyman Cave, a podcast where we meet and chat with some of boxing's more seasoned road warriors, hosted by Mark Shakespeare and Chris Scarf. Welcome back to the Journeyman Cave, everybody. We're here with round 52, and with me as always, Mr. Mark Shakespeare. How are you doing? Yes, as always, bud. Good. Yourself? Yes, not so bad. Big weekend coming up, which, uh, well, you know what I'm like, mate, at this time of year. Busy, busy, busy. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's not all bad, though, is it? So, for round 52, who have we got with us? Yeah, we've got quite a um, young pup on the show this week, mate. We've got cruiserweight Marcin Prosco, former MMA fighter. Turned over with um, Sean and Liam Wright, who was a former guest on the show. Yeah. Now boxing in the away corner. And he's only had six fights so far, but he's going to be very busy in that weight. And I think we have been a current fighter and still going, we don't get many of them on, do we? Like, And is it the first um, Polish fight we've had on this? Yeah, I believe so. Um, I mean, like you say, six fights, but plenty to talk about. I enjoyed, I enjoyed listening to him, and I remember that name, actually, because it was only recently that we did a post for him, because uh, he got himself a draw. He did, and hopefully that's first of many. Um, and like you said, like I do mention towards the end of this episode, we have been so early on in his career, hopefully we'll be able to get him back on in the future. Yeah, I, I would like to think so. I mean, he's not exactly a young pup in, in himself, but uh, his, his career is quite, uh, quite young, so... Yeah, we look forward to having you back in future, Marcin. But before we get him in, just a quick reminder, if you can subscribe wherever it is you're listening, give us a share, tell your mates about it. It all helps. We want to reach as many people and as many ears as we can. So having said all that, let's go and speak to Marcin Prosco. So you came from Poland. Whereabouts in Poland? North of the Poland is... uh small town called Elk. What's that like? It's beautiful views, lots of lakes, rivers. So when I grow up over there, I didn't realize how beautiful it is. <laughs> when I moved to UK or uh, to different towns and I couldn't see the l- amount of lakes, lakes which you can swim in. Like, I live in Yorkshire, yeah? So... Over there is a place you called County Mazure. Yeah. Right. There is a lot, all, many people from Poland, from the center, from Warsaw and big cities, they travel over there for holiday. So it's, yeah, really good. Oh, nice. So what, what brought you to the UK then? Mm, what brought me here? Like most people, work. Yeah. You come over here then, Marcin, and, um, you did your lorry li- license, didn't you? Lorry driver. Yeah, yeah, but that was uh, later on in my chapter. So w- when you come over then, mate, what did you start off with then? What what were you doing? Uh, I've been doing warehouse jobs. Uh, my job in Next, I was working Next with my fiancé. Then we got my my, uh, my first son. During that work, I, I started, because I've been training martial arts at my country, but uh, somehow it's happened that uh, in the gym, when I was in the gym, I was sparring with my friend and someone asked me if I want to fight in MMA. And I, I, of course, agreed to it. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> and we started from there, from there. So you've always had an interest. Then you started on martial arts and then took up MMA after that. Uh, kickboxing. Yeah. Yeah, I start uh, from kickboxing at my country. And here I learned how to grab a little bit. A lot of it, a lot, aren't we, on the show, done kickboxing? Yeah. Besides, mm-hmm. but never nobody... Have we had an MMA man in? Did Jason Ball do a bit Jason of MMA? Ball. But apart from that, I don't think there's anybody else who's done MMA like you. So, have you got the questions there, mate, from somebody? Right. Because I think that'll be a good question to ask you now, mate, before we get on. I think it's from Liam Wright. Is this what you've sent me on WhatsApp? I have, mate, yeah. Liam Wright? Yeah. Oh, former guest of the show. Hi, Liam. <laughs> Liam wants to know what boxer inspires you. What boxer inspires me? That's put you on the spot, Marcy, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah. You might not have one, mate. 
Oh, you might, might, we might not have job? anybody. Yeah, yeah. To be honest, I'm more following MMA. I, I just do boxing as a job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I always love Mike Tyson. Yeah. 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 Because he's just a legend. And it's, it, this is how it started in me. When it was pandemic, my son watched Mike Tyson uh, highlights all the time, yeah? I, I had that MMA career, and I was thinking, I was always losing in, on the grand game, yeah? I was thinking, I wonder how I will do in the box. I think I would be good then. And in pandemic, it started. Then I turned up to the gym, and Sean just asked me if, if I want to go on the road. Yeah, but uh, back to the question. I don't know if he inspires me, but for me, it was and is the best Mike Tyson. Yeah. It's a good answer, mate. I think that one, isn't it, buddy? Yeah, so and I've just realised why you asked me to ask that question. I've asked the, well, the wrong one, but never mind. What do you find harder, the MMA or the boxing? Mm, harder to prepare is MMA. Mm -hmm. But I can say... Boxing is harder than MMA, but it's, it's harder than I think than I thought it it will be. Yeah, do you think you could like make the transition over and you thought boxing would be a lot easier than it actually was? Oh yeah, I thought <laughs> I thought it would be. <laughs> I'm only using my hands. I I thought it would be <laughs> walking the park. Yeah, I th I just thought when when Sean asked me if I I don't know I turned up to the gym and I thought to Sean. Oh, because I had my 10th loss in MMA. And uh, MMA was never uh, like a journey. I never wanted to be journey anymore. I wanted to do career, yeah? Mm. And after my 10th loss, I, I just decided that's it. I, I'm in certain age. I got family. I can't focus 100% on it because it needs a lot of dedication. So I just decided I call it a day. In mm. MMA, and I thought that to Sean. Sean told me I can take you on the road, and uh, for me it was oh yeah, <laughs> extra money plus it for for me it was nice uh, soft landing from MMA career because you don't stop fully like called Turkey stop fighting. I stop MMA, but still little bit competition, so still that buzz little yeah. bit. Yeah, so uh, it was it was nice. And uh, I just thought, I think I'm going to do good in this <laughs> boxing. I, I thought this all people, because in MMA, gentlemen, they don't have license. There's MMA, no, is no license, yeah? No one check you. They can take you from the bus station, offer you 300 pounds, and you pro MMA, yeah, and you have pro MMA fight, yeah? In that little shows. Mm -hmm. right. See, I'm going to ask you that. I wonder if there were like um, journeymen in that spawn. You just answered me a question there, mate. Yeah, yeah. So when there is, there was, I know one journeyman who can, who can win the fight, yeah? But uh, other than that, there is none really fighters who mm. are journeymen, yeah? And when I switched for boxing, I, I, I thought, okay, I can do it, yeah? I never had plan to do career in boxing. I can just do some fights, and uh, it was <laughs> it was really called the bucket of water over my head in that first fight. Yeah, <laughs> I, I just thought I I've been sparring with boxers. I've been I just froze. I because you need to be all the time in and out, in and out, and and I and I thought in MMA I always had to be aware to not be taken down, yeah? I always thought I, I'm, I'm good in boxing and kicking. And always it, it was that scenario that if they take me down, they can win. But if we keep on the feet, I got more chance to win, yeah? <laughs> and uh, my my first boxing fight, I just thought I, I go in the middle and bang. <laughs> That's not, no, 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 no. No, it's a lot more technical than that, mate, isn't it? Just in and out. Yeah. Yeah, in and out all the time. So, like you said, you did your MA career. I think your record was what, eight wins and ten losses in the end. Yeah. So you've done it for a while then, haven't you? Pretty early on. Yeah, yeah. So, if you've asked me, I think MA has got to be tougher, you know, 
Did it say MMA? Is it MMA? MMA, sorry, yeah. <laughs> I'm used to you just pronouncing things. I do, mate, yeah, but it, that's so why he cuts it out. Let it go. I'm not yeah. cutting that bit out. Oh, cheers. Um, I mean, essentially, though, you'd think it would be hard because you've got more to think about, as in with your legs and your arms, and you can go on the floor and all that. I can't think of anything worse. <laughs> it's that chokehold that gets me, mate. Yeah, like yeah. Have you ever been choked out? Yeah. What's it like? Because that, it really terrifies me when um, I see it on telly and I think, I can understand someone gets knocked out with a shot. Sometimes it happens in MMA and it happens in boxing. But when I see him get him on the floor and really get him in a chokehold, I really feel a bit, a bit woozy like. It's, What's it like? Uh, feeling yeah. is, is a bit weird. Yeah. I had many times, many times situations that I almost been choked. So you, you almost get in choke like, you uh, you feel like on a drag, yeah, mm. like yeah, yeah. But uh, when I've been choked out at the fight, I think I don't remember if I was choked out once or twice on fight. Like I didn't tap, and then I wake up, I just see the lights, thinking because <laughs> I was getting ready the the fight day. I was so excited. I was it was big show, Cage Warriors. You know, I had big plans for it, yeah. And then fight started, and that, uh, and very quick, I waking up, I see the lights. Oh no! <laughs> it's just coming to me that that what was hap- what happened. So that's yeah. what I assumed it'd be like, but I find it really brutal that sport. You know what I mean? But respect for anybody who steps. I mean, a boxing is one thing, but MMA mm. is absolute toughness, mate. I really do believe that. So you mentioned Sean a few times. Is this this your coach? Yeah, yeah. What's... I think I think these actually are from Sean as well. Oh, are they? Yeah. Oh, you've sent them all in one go. I thought. Yeah, Liam, Liam sent one. them from him and Sean last night. I see. Well, so your coach wants to know if you listen to your coach. <laughs> of course, <laughs> of course. I do. Do you listen to him then, Martin? Is yeah, that hundred yeah. percent? Yes. I feel like there's a hidden reason he's asked that. <laughs> it's uh, it's hard to. Sometimes understand what what he's saying, yeah, especially in the fight. Well, I can understand. I mean, you're on this interview now, yours, mate, and you know what I mean. I think you're speaking really well. Do you know what I mean? I think you're no, really. No, I well. mean, even if we speak Polish, it's hard yeah. to understand. All right, this is what I mean. You need, I mean, connection. You need. It's hard if I want to say something to you, but you know the words. It's not. I. It's hard to describe. For example, if I teach my son. And I, I tell him, keep these hands up, throw this jab like this, don't don't put elbow high, yeah? And then after one minute, he do this still again, yeah? And he listens to me, but he don't understand exactly what I mean. Only when when I see, for example, when I watch, I love to watch my, my, uh, my parts, my fights, because then I see, yeah? And then I see... Oh, now I know what Sean meant, yeah? It's because I don't see my faults when, when I fight, yeah? But you're, not go, you're not going to when you're in there, mate. Yeah. You're going to learn even, that. Even when I do my pads, and then when I watch my pads, and I, and I, then I see how low hands I keep, yeah? Or how my hand stays too long in there instead of just go back to my head, yeah? So, yeah. This, this mm-hmm. is what I mean. I'm sure Sean and Liam can take into that what they want to take into that, can't they? <laughs> but I've heard you, uh, I, I think, listen all the time, me, Mars, I'm on your side. 100%, mate. Oh, <laughs> I'm yeah. always on the fighter's side. Okay. <laughs> so the thing is, we all wait. You're a cruiserweight, aren't you? Yeah. And I bet that phone of yours would never stop ringing Mars in. I mean, I've been around the circuit a few times, and you and Perry Howe get mentioned. You're, you're the two people who are willing to step in at that way, any time, any place, anywhere. You're yeah, the t- yeah. main two people. So, as you know, you're gonna ask, that phone's going to ring at any time for you, mate, you and Perry. And I think you're going to be very, very busy. So have you got any um, goals going forward? Are you just going to carry on or do you want to get to 50 or...? Oh, I would love to. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. I Because uh, the the license, the process, it took me um, two years. So when, when I applied for the li- for license, I think I was... 34. Mm, so quite later on then. Yeah, yeah, but I, I, I'm 37 now, yeah. Mm. And when I apply and uh, when I heard about Journeyman and when I see that they got about 100 fights, I was thinking, 
I want to have 500 fights. <laughs> That's the point. Yeah, if you do this, you'll fight anybody. But time you finished at the end, Marsh, and I can see in a few years down the line, some of these fighters that you have fought are going to be going on to be British level, Commonwealth and above because you're stepping with anybody, buddy. And mm. respect for that. Really, mate. Yeah, I had one fight offer and uh, I sparred with the guy before and when, when I had the offer, my first thought was no. <laughs> <laughs> my first thought was no way, no way, no way. But then after one minute maybe, I thought... This is what I sign up for, yeah? Mm -hmm. I, I'm not building career. I'm not picking my opponents. If I, I just do my job, yeah? If they offer me this guy, I fight. Yeah, 100%, mate. You should be yeah. very proud of that. And I'm looking forward to watching it going further as well, mate. And there's one more question from Shot, mostly from Liam, I think. I think I'll ask you this one. Apparently, um, something about swimming in the cold sea. I've not seen that. Mm. I've not got that. <laughs> You know, the cold. Yeah. Cold is good for us, yeah? Yeah. So uh, I've been I've been traveled to the sea to, I think it was winter, to have a dive. Where were they sent? Where'd you go? Um, I don't remember if it was Blackpool or Scarborough. Because it was uh, a while ago, yeah? I, I would do it more often, but it's too, too long a drive. Yeah. yeah. I know yeah. Jake Pollard's a big cold. He lives on... East Coast to Bridlington, and he goes every week. He goes from an in sea. He yeah. said it makes him. He said it really wakes him up. Yeah, so, yeah. In fight day, yeah, I always do the cold uh, bath. Yeah, I put some cold plunge and I do it uh, every day. Shame we haven't got any coastline round, isn't it, mate? I have to take him down to Bridlington. We always went me one time. I say it's cold enough when we go to Bridlington just to watch a football match, and I've got a coat on. Yeah, you're not getting me in water. <laughs> it's it's only a state of mind, yeah? yeah. I know. Because if it's windy and it's uh, zero degree, and I'm going outside, I'm I'm shaking as well. Like I can do it, yeah. But if I have state of mind that okay, let's go, I'm relaxed. But breathing breathing is the big part of it, yeah. You can take it easily, yeah. So. This is a question I want to ask them, Marcy. So when you've been in zero degrees, whether it's in Scarborough or Blackpool, is there anybody else there with you or are you on your own? Is anybody else doing it? Oh, no. I, I take my kids with me. My son wants to do it. <laughs> <laughs> my son is now uh, 11. He will be 12 in October. But at the time we've been doing it, it he was maybe nine. He wants to do it. My son is tough, yeah? Wow. I've, I don't know if I let him get in. in. But uh, he, when I did cold showers at home, I've been doing 20 minutes cold showers yeah. in the winter. When I see Winhof Win uh, online and then... Because I see stuff and I try. If it works for me, I'm not doing it. If, mm -hmm. if it works, I'm doing it, yeah? Breathing exercise, stretching dieting yeah i mean not dieting that you portion your food dieting that way that you eating what's good for you yeah you can eat a lot meat and stuff so uh i see this stuff and i implement it in my life and if it works for me i keep in it if not i don't yeah yeah i can't i think we'll have to get scarfy to jump in see in november at Bridlington. Are you going to go in, Marcin? Yeah. I think we've got to make a date, right? We've got to film yeah, that. I'm busy in November. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we'll go into your career then now, mate, into your boxing, bud. Before we do, we have got one more question, haven't we? And well, I didn't have last one, so I don't know. It's from Messenger. Oh, that one. I didn't know what that meant. Well, that's exactly I don't know what I meant, but apparently I'm talking and you're going to know what it means. So you tell him. So who sent this one? Um, Is this another from Liam or...? No, this is not from Liam. Tom Poxon. Tom Poxon mm, wants yeah. to know, how big is your Corey? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I knew it, no. I knew I it. Don't, no. I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> that's three of us then. No, I didn't know what he said. He what? sent me this message. That's what it says. And he says, um, and he says, oh, I'll mention it to him. 
He goes, no, I mean, ask him how big Corey is. And I says, oh, yeah, I've got you. I'll ask him. And he sent me one back saying, he'll know what you mean. So Oof. you don't know what he means. No. You don't know anybody called Corey? No. <laughs> it's not a euphemism, though, is it? Tom must know this, and we'll have to get we'll have to work with Tom about this after. I will contact I Tom should. about this. Don't worry, you're not the first one not understood a question, Martin, so you don't have to worry about there, mate. Inside jokes. Inside joke, and I'm going to work with Tom when I see him. But um, getting into your career, mate, have you said career's away at the minute? Yeah. Six fights so far. Yeah. Five losses, and we have got a draw in there, mate. So it's not a bad start, you know what I mean? And the nickname Mad Boy, where's that come from? It's, it was from my first gym, I think first gym MMA, yeah, it just, I've been a bit mad, <laughs> <laughs> crazy when fighting, just go in the middle, in the cage and swing. So that's why you're mad boy, mate, pure animal. So anyway, someone did some good t-shirts for him, didn't they? They did. But- Very good t-shirts, yeah. I give it away from my corner and I was a little bit regretting <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you got I, one now then, mate? I only got, kept one for me. Oh, we'll have to get another one sorted out, mate. Have we got a budget? Yeah, we are. Have we? we? <laughs> I, I I was thinking to my, to message to you and uh, buy buy some of you. Oh, we'll get some done for you. Um, yeah. Our friends at Blackfords can make you a couple, mate. We'll, we can get that sorted for you, no problem. Because I know a lot of people been commenting on yours. I just saw that dog. It just fitted perfect with what you were doing. Mm. Just, but you know, M&A gloves on. Yeah, Really yeah. cool. So I like that one. So I'm, I'm glad you like them, mate. That's what we're here for. Oh, I love it. I only wear, wear for the fight, so... That's what they're there for, mate, isn't it? Everyone deserves a T-shirt, as I always say. <laughs> then uh, the work started to picking up, and uh, my medicals was getting longer and longer. I couldn't pass them. And for a while, I was just more focus on work and getting through the medicals, not as... I was trained, I was. I did training, but uh, not as much boxing. I was doing mostly running, yeah, mm-hmm. to get fit and not, not sparring at all. Just, I spar when uh, someone else needed, when they ask me. So, July 2023... June actually, I finally passed my uh, my medicals. I get my license, and then my coach asked me if I want to fight next week. <laughs> of course, I want. Yeah, I I've been doing some running. I'm I'm thinking I'm fit. Let's do it. Yeah, and it was uh, I think South or North North Wales. Mm, quite definitely five, in Wales. Yeah, five and a half hour driving. I did my session Friday. I didn't know who I fight. Saturday morning, I wake up, didn't want too much eat because I didn't know, yeah, how much was my weight. Because I'm around cruiser weight, yeah, but I didn't want to mess it up. Have over, my coach said, if I, if I am overweight, they might not take the fight, yeah. Mm. So I arrived there, I actually been 4 kg. Under. Under. And my opponent was a bit over, yeah. I said to my coach, I'm driving because I got fighting nerves, so I don't know what, I wouldn't know what to do sitting mm-hmm. in the car, so I just drive and keep my mind occupied. Mm-hmm. But that wasn't a good idea. I've been so tired. <laughs> yeah, I've been so tired. He threw a few shots. He caught me in the chin. He dropped me, but uh, I never, I never dropped like this, yeah? I, I, stood, I stood up, he came to eight. I carry on, but on the beginning of the fight, he caught me in the liver. Mm. And and that's why my hands drop, I can see in the video. He he caught me in the liver on the beginning, and then he dropped me, and then he f- we'll be trying to figure out what I need to do next, yeah? So I pick up my training. I still work as I was, as I was before, up to my second fight. But obviously, I've been doing lots of uh, apps because uh, I didn't want to get stopped to the stomach, yeah? You've got, yeah. The do- when you said you got caught in liver, I started feeling a bit sick myself. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah. So, uh, my second fight. Yeah, that was against Lee. Lee Roberts wanted it, mate. Yeah, that. yeah. Lost TKO round my, two. Yeah, yeah. My fault. This mm-hmm. is all my fault because, uh, like I said, I stood in the middle. I was attacking him. 
and uh, he was going on exchange as well. He, he, I don't think that was when I watched him back. I was thinking, wow, he he, he was uh, risking a lot as well, yeah, because he was swinging and now he was good. He had good f- head movement, mm-hmm. but not moving back. Yeah, it was just a toe to war, to a war bit sounds of it, mate. Want yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, after this fight, that's it. Two fights, yeah. And my coach told me either you find closer gym, closer to your home, some gym, so you can do boxing. No running, no no anything. You need to do boxing, yeah. We need to figure out something. Otherwise, we're not booking the fight, yeah. And because I was lacking sparring, because. Mm. Sparring is make you, it makes you know sharp. the distance, yeah. yeah. It's vital you get that sparring in, especially when you first start, Marcy. I mean, as you go on, you become more a seasoned pro and you've got what you need. You're not to spar maybe as much because you'll be out every week. Yeah. But when you first start, I, I, assume, I imagine that, like Sean just said to you there, you need to get used to that range, don't you? You need to get in and out. You need that sparring to start off with, mate. So after you've had them two fights, mate, we're going to your third fight against Jeff Dixon, but we don't get stopped, do we, mate? So we're obviously learning. <laughs> yes, uh, and obviously it was. Uh, I could, it could be a draw for me, I think. Yeah. Because uh, it was really equal fight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fifty-fifty, mate. Yeah. It, it was fifty-fifty. Yeah. Uh, he's because when when the when the guys see that I got losses by stoppages, they think, oh. They can get it, yeah. Oh, and they love a stoppage, mate, against someone like you. Yeah. This, so he starts strong, but after one, two minutes, he found out that uh, it's not going to be that easy. Yeah, so you've gone over there and you've learned a lot. Yeah, it's, I, I was unscathed, but mm. uh, in the fourth round, he threw the elbow and he caught me badly in oh. the eye. Yeah, and then I found out after the fight that I got cut in my uh, chin as well oh, right. from the head. Double blow. So he fought me two times. Mm. Yeah. So you think, reckon the could should have been maybe a point taken off on that fight, maybe, or was it accidental? When I watched it back, because I watched this fight at least fifty times, yeah. So uh, I think it could should be point taken off because that wasn't the first time he he threw the elbow. Yeah. When I seen it, he always threw the jab and then left it the elbow. Yeah, many times. And uh, in the fourth round, I started very well. I jabbed him, I put him to the stomach, and then we went to exchange, and he not even leave the elbow, but swing it. Yes. And and I just, I could hear me, myself, ah, like this, because okay. it was pain, because here is the bone, mm. yeah? Mm. The referee stopped for, for a while, Sean started shout on me <laughs> to keep carrying on. <laughs> uh, but I was disappointed with it. But you got through it. Another yeah. learning experience, mate. You'll learn from that as well. And like you said, you've obviously gone back to the drawing board in that third fight and you've gone out and you haven't been stopped. Yeah. And you've come through some more obstacles in that fight, so credit to you as well, mate. Yeah, you know, uh, for me, I was very, very happy after this fight because I've been stopped two times. Yeah, it was very disappointing and maybe shameful little bit for me, yeah? In the boxing gym, in my gym, yeah? When I've been training this time, all this time, and then I had fights and I've been stopped, yeah? It's for like embarrassing a little bit, yeah? And I've been scared inside that I, I'm going to get stopped again, yeah? And in the changing room, I was I was thinking, that might be my last fight, yeah? I I want to enjoy it now. I want to enjoy it because it might be my last. And I have that fear in me. Most people got nerves before the fight, yeah? But I can tell now I had that fear, yeah? To not do it. And after I done it, even though I lost, but uh, it was very even fight, I was so happy that I didn't give up. Yeah, yeah 100%. And it gives you that little belief. And obviously moving forward, you know now what you can do, and you'll learn from that fight. Like you said, as you go forward, mate, you'll be getting stopped less and less, and you've proven to yourself that you can do it now, aren't you? Yeah. And then obviously, 
A guy who gets mentioned on the circuit a little bit, Tom Pogson. What did you reckon to him? Very good, mm. yeah. He gets mentioned, I've heard him on the, you know, your little things on the circuit and he has yeah. been mentioned a few times, Tom. He didn't score no stoppages yet. Yeah. Uh, so before my fight with Jeff Dixon, because yep. I've been struggling for sparring, I, I spar with Tom. Yeah. I think it was the hardest sparring I had, yeah? Yeah. And after sparring with him, I figured out that I need to move. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that I need, I can stay in the middle, yeah? And then after Jeff Dixon, my coach asked me if I fight Tom, yeah? And that was no. <laughs> the man-man don't want that. No, 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 no. I, I mean, because after Jeff Dixon, I thought my next one will be win, yeah? Uh-huh. I, was, I was, and then I, when I get the text, no, I want, I want the win and now very hard fight. But I took the fight and I, I, I did well with Tom, I think. Yeah, and like you said, I think you want to look at going forward this, Tom, and like you said, lost on points, mate, and that's two in a row where we didn't get stopped, mate. But yeah. this is what I want to know about, mate, the big draw. I were absolutely buzzing when I messaged Scarf that you mm-hmm. got this draw. You are in Sheffield, weren't you? And we yeah. met afterwards, didn't we? And yeah, you thought yeah. you could have maybe got the W if you'd have pushed that little bit harder, so... It was a good draw. Well done for that, mate. So Thank come you. on, fill us in against um it were against Brendan Needham, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Come on, fill us in. I love it when someone gets a result. I mean, I wasn't happy after the fight. Yeah. I can when you talked to me when we had a little coffee after you weren't happy, were you? Yeah, you know, because uh, the goal is changing. I mean goal. This first you want at first I didn't want to get the stop eh, to get stopped, yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, that, then you want the win. And uh, I always want the win, yeah? If, I know gentlemen supposed to just get through, but I want to win, <laughs> yeah? <laughs> and uh, so I watched Brandon before we fight, before we fought. I, I watched videos, yeah? And I thought that will be fight to get the win, yeah? And uh, to my surprise... He did better than in these videos, mm-hmm. yeah. But uh, what was his weak point? That he rest too much between exchanges, mm-hmm. yeah. He throw a few shots and then need 10, 20 seconds to get the breather, yeah. And I seen that in the videos in YouTube. I seen, what? I didn't know, understand what's going on in, in this fight. It's like these fighters get the agreement to just throw a few and mm. then rest, yeah? And uh, in our fight, he started strong, but uh, from the second round, he started to catch in the breather much more and more and more. And in this time, I just k- kept attacking. Kept the pressure on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you think you won that fight in the end or do you think a draw were a fair result? Mm, it's... Difficult to say? Um, I just watched it yesterday, the fight. I, yeah. I like to watch it in my fights. Yeah, I always want to learn what I did wrong. And uh, I, I think I won. Mm-hmm. I think because when the commentators, it's hard to be to judge because what they say, yeah? They, after the first round, they said they give it the round for him, for Needham, first and second round. But when I watch it, I think I actually could nick it the first round and second. And third, I won definitely. And fourth was close as well. Because fourth, he definitely knew he he, he could lose. Yeah. And uh, he just throw it all to get the stoppage. Yeah. So you knew he knew as well that you got, you're got you worried. So it's a great performance from you, that is, mate, isn't it? So, but you still weren't happy with that afterwards, the performance then? Mm, no, because my coach... Give me a shit for this. <laughs> he told me off badly, yeah, for the... But I think he told me off and I watched it back and I, because when Brandon throw combos on me, I give it back straight away. I should step back and then give him back, yeah? But I wanted to count. Yeah. Yeah. But I didn't... He, he always telling me not to go into exchanges, exchanges too much, yeah? And in Ford, it was a bit of that exchanges, but 
he was pressuring me very, very much, yeah? And I just throw it back a little bit. So like you say, it's a good draw to have a record that, mate. We all know that sometimes a draw means a win on the road, don't we? Mm-hmm. That we've learned to cut over the years. So, you know, well done for that, mate. And I watched that fight and I thought you were very close and, and you could have got the nod. But you definitely deserved a draw, at least you got some out on that fight. And I did watch that fight and I enjoyed it. So well done to that, mate. And then on to the, on to the minute, fight number six. <sighs> this is a bit of a sore one, this, isn't it? You got retired against Jack Bannister, mate. Come on, yeah. fill us in. This is not the end of Martin as well, by the way, is it? You're going to be back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I to be honest, think uh, I could get through it. Uh, I have fight on my phone. Because I, I study it, yeah, I, w- I want to see. So, it's definitely, he was definitely very fast, mm-hmm. yeah. He was uh, taller than me. I always, tr- it's like Josh K- Kain, yeah, my, my debut, tall guy. I always struggle with tall guys. And, but uh, I, could, I could tell he, he was the fastest opponent to date. Mm. The fastest to date. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was uh, very fast on, on the feet. And so we start the first round. I could see the speed difference. But everyone, every round, I, I get I give back the punches, yeah? But he throw more. He catch me more times. After first round, I get I got black eye, I think. And then my coach started to warn me, yeah? I have to move, I have to move, because uh, he will pull me from the fight. And before the fourth round, he told me, I give you one more round, yeah? Show me, otherwise I, I, I throw the towel, yeah? And it was going good, it was, was going well, fourth round, and uh, 20 seconds till the end, he slipped my jab, throw uppercut, and then overhand, stunned me. Then throw a few punches. But the experience from previous fights and uh, helped me that I didn't get the real stoppage, referee, mm-hmm. yeah? And I didn't get down because after I get, got caught, I was moving. I was moving and I even throw back. I throw back, I think, backhand. I wave to the referee. I think I wave to my coach. <laughs> <laughs> Doing it. I wave to him. Not, not to stop it, yeah? And then I caught him with one and two. He moved back. Then we've been in the distance, a few seconds, and the round stop. yeah? Mm. And I thought, I, I can do it. But Sean said, no. Mm. But, uh, you know, in the amount of that in the boxing, I'm not uh, complaining for Sean. No, if if Sean's pulled you out, mate, he must have seen something in that, mate. He's yeah. a great coach. And like you said, you're here to fight another day, mate. What I like to say is, mate, you, you've got a tough division that you're involved in. But like we said earlier, that phone is not going to stop ringing for you, mate. You're going to be busy week in, week out. So keep learning, keep moving. Listen to Sean and Liam. <laughs> <laughs> and I promise you, you'll go very far, mate. And we'll see a lot of you on the circuit, honestly. And I think I'd like to end it there, mate, and say thank you very much for your time. Thank you. I'll get you back again in future. 100%. You've got to come back. I've been surprised I only got six fights. I thought, because I listened to you guys a few times. I listened to the Liam episode. I listened to Perry Howe episode and a couple more. Yeah, and I thought, oh, I'll be there sometime. But I thought... (laughs) Maybe in my 20 fights. Oh, no, you come back, mate, after yeah. 20. But let, I'll tell you what, what we'll do when you get to, let's say 25, we'll get you back in. Yeah. Deal. Deal. And let's see if you, let's see if you can get a D or a W on there for 25. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. But most of all, keep moving, keep learning, and keep going what you're doing, mate. And we'll get you some more T-shirts sorted out, okay? <laughs> nice. All, all the best, mate. Thank, Thank you, you, mate. Thank you, guys. Thank you. The Journeyman Cape is produced by James Proud. Music by Ryan Carrier. Special thanks to Rhythmic Studios for hosting. All views expressed are of the guests only. 
journeyman cave and horse bear no responsibility for any opinions given. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at the journeyman cave.